few moments ago, you saw live here on Action News as the pontiff was in the Pope Mobile, as it is called, circling around the block outside of the cathedral to the thousands of people who have ringed outside of here just to catch a glimpse of the Holy Father. Truly a moment of a lifetime for everyone involved here. A short time ago, about two and a half hours ago, the Holy Father arrived at Newark International Airport. We'd like to show you a little videotape of that. The pontiff walking down off of what, have, what is called Shepherd One, the aircraft, as it is always dubbed when it is carrying the Pope. He stepped down, and unlike past visits to America, because of the injury he sustained to his hip last year and the operation that followed, he could not get down on his knees and kiss the earth as he does so often. But we are told that he did have a bowl of earth that was presented to him in which he could put his lips to and grace the soil of America, the significance of America, which he refers to as the world's playground. The pontiff is so excited to be back here. You can see it on his face. You can see the vitality of this man, 75 years old in the 17th year of his pontificate. There he is greeting parishioners here at Sacred Heart, greeting the many nuns and brothers of the various orders from around the Northeast and the hierarchy of the Catholic Church here in America. So many people have gathered here to greet the pontiff, to get a look at the pontiff. It's a shame that more people can't share in this moment actually being there with him. But spiritually, I can tell you from being outside of the cathedral and witnessing firsthand the reaction of the people outside here who have waited to see Pope John Paul II. They are connected to him spiritually. Just catching a glimpse is all they need. And of course, the events that are planned throughout the week here in New Jersey, at Giant Stadium tomorrow night, at the UN tomorrow, Friday morning at Aqueduct Raceway where he will give an open air mass. John. And of course, the capper to the trip will be Saturday morning at Central Park with a huge open air mass and yes John as you oh he is in many many ways you can feel just the uplifting spirit of that music and of course having the presence of the Pope here adds to it just so much I've been within close proximity to Pope John Paul II once before and I can tell you it's an electric feeling and and I'm not Catholic and this Pope has an effect on anyone who comes into contact with him. And you can multiply it many, many times over if you are a member of the Catholic Church. And we are anticipating that the Pope will be giving a lengthy homily here tonight. This is not a mass, it is a prayer service. We have received some of the advanced text in which he will be speaking to issues directly affecting this community in which he is at right now. It is no coincidence that he is in Newark at Sacred Heart Cathedral. This is a parish which has really suffered in recent years. It has lost many parishioners. Its financial support is waning and needs to be subsidized at this time. Many immigrants, many Spanish-speaking people now live in this neighborhood that once used to be affluent and now is teetering on the poverty line. The Pope is here to send a signal. He wants to reach out to all peoples and to say that the Catholic Church is for everyone. And he says that, we read it in our advanced copy, the text of his sermon and homily this evening. He makes that point. He will also touch on the role of women in the Catholic Church and how the hierarchy of the church has not been all it could be in regard to the female issue in years past and how he aims to change that. John, it is expected that he will sit for this. Infectious, and we are all caught up in the moment here. It is something to behold, and Action News is going to bring it all to you all week long, so stay with us, and we'll have more coming up on Action News at 6, but right now we want to go back to Ann Nyberg. Ann? All right, John, we will rejoin you momentarily. We'll have much more. It's diversity. Well, there has been an awful lot of talk here today, Ann, although none of it has been confirmed by uh, the papal party yet, that there might even be a joint statement coming from both the pontiff and the president related to healing that needs to take place in the wake of that O.J. Simpson verdict. It is ironic, as you point out, that, that the O.J. Simpson case could bleed into an event of this magnitude. But the Holy Father, 
wants to touch as many souls as he can. And so if he can do so through that means, by all means, he will do it. I'd like to bring back in Father Stephen Harris from the Archdiocese of New York to talk about that and to talk about the broad umbrella that Pope John Paul II, the grand design to reach out to so many diverse peoples with his papacy. He has gone to Africa, uh, to Indonesia, all over the world. That's truly been one of the hallmarks of his term. This pope has traveled more than any pope, but it's not just continue to be reconciling. And there is an ecclesiastical aspect to his reign that is undeniable and unlike any pope prior to him. No one has affected the point that we see one another as sisters and brothers. We want to go back inside of Sacred Heart Cathedral now and show you some of the events taking place. The Holy Father has not yet begun his homily. You can hear the assembled choir of very talented singers who are here not to entertain, but to uplift and to bring everyone to a critical mass, so to speak, no pun intended, to be receptive to the Holy Father's word this evening. Music is an essential part of what we can our liturgy of the hours. Father Stephen Harris from the Archdiocese of New York, as the choir and its song envelops us here in Newark, New Jersey, we're going to head back to our studios in Connecticut, but we are far from done yet. And back to you. You have a very lucky seat tonight, John. Thank you very much. Our cover. Now, we need to talk about the security measures, the extreme security measures that have been taken around this pope. Oh, the, the measures are unprecedented, much more so than I have witnessed in previous presidential visits. All I can tell you are there are literally hundreds upon hundreds of police officers here and Secret Service agents, the Swiss Guards, of course, whose main responsibility it is to guard the Pope. We're going to bring you so much more here from Newark and from the papal visit in the metropolitan area throughout the week. Stay tuned to Action News. And let's go back to you. All right, John. Thank you very much. And we'll be right back with sports. Incredible schedule that the pontiff has over the next five days, John. Actually, Ann, we're going to depart for a second because you were mentioning, mentioning Yom Kippur. Right now, we're going to take a live picture inside, and the choir is singing from the Jewish scriptures. And that's what you're hearing, and it is not a coincidence, this being the highest of holy days in the Jewish faith. Another example of this pontiff reaching out to peoples of other religions. That does it for our live Action News coverage of the papal visit for now. Stay tuned to the Action News Late Edition at 11 o'clock for so much more. And back to you. Including that schedule, John. Thanks very much.